Where to start? To begin at the beginning, then. The history of the future. When I was a boy, many long years ago, I yearned to stand tall as the heroes of Eld. But like a fool seeking to pluck the stars from the heavens, my every attempt to reprise their deeds fell short. And then one day, a hero who looked at the horizon and beyond and saw I knew not what, stood before me in the flesh. I would give anything to stand at that hero's side. Together we would travel the lands and cross the seas and take to the skies upon the eternal wind. However, you died. There are things which we can ill afford to lose. The first was rejoined with the source. This collision of worlds brought about the eighth umbral calamity and the deaths of countless multitudes. I should start with those great minds who survived the calamity, Sid Garland being perhaps the greatest. In hopes of staying the unending tides of war, he and his fellows pursued all manner of possible solutions. One of these was rooted in a theory which unified several fundamental principles discovered over the course of the Warrior of Light's adventures. It proposed a method by which one could enter the river of time, traverse the rift, and leap between worlds. Perfecting that idea, however, was a work which consumed their lifetimes. And thus was it left to future generations to decide whether theory would be put into practice. But all the while, the world continued to burn. Hope was a feeble outpost, beset on all sides by thievery and misery and murder. A paradise fit to grace the Eighth Umbral Era. People cried out in despair, We are finished! Mankind is finished! The fighting went on unabated, but some few took up Sid's research and labored to realize those impossible ideas. Then others raised their voices in answer. Though we be beyond salvation, those who came before may yet be saved. We will forge a crossroads and pave the way for a different future. By the wisdom of our forebears, we will prevent this calamity from ever having come to pass. After two centuries of labor, their descendants finally succeeded in awakening the Crystal Tower and, in doing so, roused its caretaker, me. I am keeper of this tower's boundless wisdom, the wisdom of ages without age, of everywhere and nowhere. This grand structure was already capable of storing the energies required to attempt the translocation. All that remained was to augment some few of its functions based upon the theoretical models of Sid and his compeers. Tis a boon born of sacrifices yet unmade. The great work of those who tamed the wings of time and grasped the nature of the rift. The parting gift of brave heroes who will one day give their lives for a brighter future. By this stage, scholars had largely established the phenomena underpinning the rejoining and identified the first as the shard which precipitated the eighth umbral calamity. Would that it was so easy. But I fear my aim was slightly off. We missed our mark by almost an entire century, by this realm's reckoning. I came to the conclusion that the salvation of the world would take many long years, many more than remain to me. And so I made myself one with the Crystal Tower, that I might live indefinitely. I am but an extension of it now. Hence my weakness the farther I travel, and the longer I am away. The people of this world have entrusted their hopes to us. We cannot fail them nor those who roused me from my slumber. Here in the first, the world has been all but consumed by primordial light, a luminous flood swallowing everything in its path. More than nine-tenths of this star was lost, and the fortunate few who survived are hounded by abominations born of that catastrophe even now, feasting upon what little life remains beneath burning skies. Sin eaters. We call them. I swear on my life, even should it cost me all I have, I would see each and every one of them slain, that this world might be spared from oblivion.
Not only for the first, but for the source as well. Save one, and we save the other. Although our many hurts will be years in the mending, I have faith that this world and her people will one day be whole once more. To save the first from this menace, I learned to bridge the rift between worlds, that I might call upon the aid of the greatest of heroes. The eternal light of these creatures has confounded us for nigh on a hundred years. For each we have put down, another has risen up in its place, born of the self-same ether relinquished by its predecessor. But now we have a weapon, a way to contain that corruption. The blessing of light, and the hero who wields it, for she is my friend, my inspiration. How many years have I waited for this moment? For the one possessed of her blessing. For a hundred years they yearned for a means to fight back against the Sin Eaters, and at last they have found her, summoning an all but forgotten dream from my youth. The only woman who might stand a chance against them. This calamity is but another crisis to be overcome, and we will. Man is more resilient than you think. His achievements are not the product of violence and bloodshed, but compassion and understanding. I have beheld it in the blood and sweat and tears of those who would sacrifice everything for a future they may never know, that their children may never know. It is for that very reason Sid and his colleagues bequeathed their legacy as an offering and not an edict. I am merely the bearer of that wish, come to ensure it is safely delivered. I once told you that there are things we can ill afford to lose. Things, I said. Though in truth I spoke of a person. To give all of oneself for the happiness of others, and with no promise of reward. It is a hard thing to ask. Harder still for those condemned to survive in a world which pitted brother against brother. I wonder if that other age continues onward somehow, cut adrift from time's flow. Indeed, you are right to call the execution of this plan miraculous, though the force which held it together was nothing so inexplicable. It was her. The warrior of light has been our unbroken thread. Where others would stumble and fall, she would rise above. Where others would break and run, she would carry on. The warrior of light's tale is one of unyielding bravery. To tell it was to feel courage. To hear it was to feel hope. It was a breath of inspiration in an age of suffocating shadow. In the histories of a fallen nation was our hero hailed as its greatest ally. In the time-worn pages of a noble's memoirs were her deeds joyously retold. For many, these stories were the flame which warmed them through the coldest of nights. And so it should come as little surprise that the plan found no shortage of volunteers, concerning as it did the Warrior of Light herself. It was their chance to add their own verse to the hero's saga. She was the lodestar that brought them all together to send their final message back through time and space to you. The light of your legacy was our torch in the darkness. Burn bright again and live.